Ultra Kill is a game that I have a feeling you can guess the general gist of just based on the name. It's loud, visceral, in your face. This game oozes its essence all over the place, then asks you to bathe in it while playing. You heal by covering yourself in the blood of your enemies, which you can slaughter in a large variety of ways, each one upping the last. The game is engrossing and captivating in every sense of the word, and what I'd like to talk about, or at least attempt to, are the four main feelings in Ultra Kill. Badly. The panic that is induced while playing Ultra Kill is more apt to the scrambles that can occur in combat. Whether it be those times you're hovering at low HP and need to make a desperate maneuver to heal it back up, or you've just lost track of all the carnage. Both of these situations lead to a scramble that has very strong potential to be flat out annoying. In most cases, situations in which a game leads you to not knowing what is happening feels frustrating. And if you were to die, it would feel like something just cheated you out of your life. However, in the way that Ultra Kill is designed, this doesn't lead to frustration, but instead, improvisation. The tools you're granted and the way everything is generally designed means that these scrambles are very easily recovered from. So this panic into recovery ends up leading you to feel empowered in the end instead of frustrated. For example, if I'm surrounded in carnage and hovering at low HP and manage to maneuver my way close enough to just a single enemy, I can now reliably heal back up and feel much more secure in my game plan. Everything allows for reckless play and chaotic action, and there is a massive safety net underlying all of it. So the panic just feels more entertaining than anything. This is because the panic creates situations that demand a snap decision to be made. You're constantly skirting between life and death. However, the risk reward is heavily skewed in your favor. So you're given a bunch of options to work through with these snap decisions, and they all work, which makes it feel very natural and rewarding. You're basically presented with all of these things to fall back on when shit hits the fan, meaning that even in situations where you may not really know what's happening, because you have such reliable tools, it ends up making the confusion more fun than it would be in other cases. To sum it up, the panic in Ultra Kill is entertaining because it shifts the question from what can I do to what should I do. This reframing of how a player feels panic in Ultra Kill in turn allows the game to present situations that are increasingly hectic and difficult. The safety net I mentioned before existing means that the levels and rooms can keep growing in their intensity and it doesn't lead to frustration, just excitement. Calculation is where I think, from a raw gameplay perspective, the character action influence in Ultra Kill is felt most. This is because, despite the complete shift in actual gameplay from something like Devil May Cry, the way your combos and style function, it's actually pretty similar from a game theory sense. Consider in a game like Devil May Cry, where the player reaches the point they're starting to work through their combos deliberately and are doing things with style in mind. You'll see a variety of moves and tactics used that help you extend your style points and of course look damn good while doing it. Well, Ultra Kill offers something very similar just through the lens of an FPS. That style meter in the top right functions on and encourages just as much experimentation as it does in your DMCs of the world. You build extra style by getting multiple kills in rapid succession, constantly using new weapons in your strings, not taking damage, parrying attacks, making massive explosions, etc, etc, etc. There are a lot of different ways to build your style meter that all feel intuitive. For simplicity's sake, we'll focus in on the fact that it rewards variety, because this focus on variety is what will help me best illustrate the calculation aspect of Ultra Kill. In Ultra Kill, your weapon pool isn't the largest of the genre, however it does an amazing job at keeping your tools varied and filling different niches. There's very little overlap in what the weapons accomplish, including the sub-weapons. This makes it so, while there's only a handful of actual individual weapons, you're given a deep toolbox to work with in which all of the tools perform something specific, but also talk to each other. This means that in combat you have a huge variety of options that can link into one another very smoothly and also synergize with each other. This can range from the simplicity of using the whiplash, your grappling hook, to pull an enemy in to get closer with the shotgun, to a more thoughtful application like how the whiplash and rocket launcher interact. In this case what is happening is the rocket launcher does bonus damage and creates a larger explosion on enemies who are falling. The synergy comes in because enemies who are being pulled in by the whiplash and are airborne count as falling, which allows you to get these higher damage and bigger explosions that much more conveniently. I'm not going to discuss all the varying synergies and ways that the weapons interact with each other because that's not the purpose of this video. Where the depth and calculation in Ultra Kill come in is mixing and matching these kinds of interactions with each other while still maintaining all the fundamentals of combat, like dodging and staying mobile. You'll consistently be put in situations where you have to handle a group of enemies that all do varying different things, 
and all have varying weaknesses in which you are expected to use your variety of tools. Something important though is that this is not a game where you have to constantly fit the square peg in the square hole in which all the enemies have only one way of really effectively dealing with them. It's more like you are given a massive spread of options for all of these enemies, and some are better than others, but there's not necessarily an objective, correct choice. Unless you're a nerd who really cares about the numbers. I've probably repeated myself enough at this point, but just to make sure, the calculation is in the decision making that comes into handling these kinds of situations, with style, while managing all of your other opportunities and obstacles. I'm sure that in just me talking about them, these ideas may seem a little underwhelming. However, in the actual here and now of playing the game, you have to perform all of these actions and execute these ideas on a short clock. Constantly. Power. Once you as a player have overcome the shakiness of panic and the delays of calculation, the prevailing feeling you'll end up with in combat is raw power. This is because you can almost consider things like the negatives that come along with taking your time to think about your next move, or the uneasiness involved in being panicked as something like training weights. Once you've overcome them and start to really get into the flow of Ultra Kill, and are engaging in the combat fully engrossed in the many overlapping mechanics and systems, you are by all means an unstoppable force against the denizens of hell. There's nothing in the game that serves to really limit the player and what they can do besides the player themselves and their own execution. It's unlikely that someone will be an unhittable god dodging every move, but that's the thing. No one ever has to be because of how lenient and player-driven the recovery is. Someone with a firm grasp on how to properly fuel their health bar back up after a bad move is going to be likely nigh unkillable, which means they can play more and more recklessly which is what the entire game is designed around. This reckless gameplay will inherently drive feelings of power to the player because it puts them in the driver's seat. All actions are proactive in combat and allow the pace to be dictated by the player, which gives a lot of control over everything. There are reactive options in Ultra Kill, of course, but the genius is that the gameplay loop frames these options to be used in a proactive manner. Things like the parry, once fully understood, which I haven't really gotten to the point of, end up as ways of stopping enemies as opposed to opening them up. It's not a case of waiting, parrying, then striking, it's that you're on the offensive and prevent them from stopping your offense, allowing you to further increase the pressure put upon the enemy. This ability to constantly maintain control over the combat and maintain applying varying levels and forms of pressure is a big component to the power felt while playing Ultra Kill. Also, shooting rockets and making big explosions killing everything it's a pretty big power fantasy. There are times in which Ultra Kill is very quiet. There's not much action occurring, and you're alone with thoughts and the ambiance of the game. These sections end up feeling very deliberate, and I think they're underappreciated. It provides such a nice relief from the constant actions and feelings that I've already talked about at length. Had the game just constantly slammed the player with this action without these breather sections, it would start to lean into being overwhelming in the negative way. There's always the potential of too much of a good thing. These also allow you to start to get more properly invested in the action that's occurring. It's like having the calm before the storm. These moments that create space for the elevation. It's very similar to how in music there are sections that drop a lot of the instruments and intensity to do the very same thing. They build the space to add impact when things get intense. Fittingly enough, Ultra Kill combines both of these with the music that plays in the background of the levels. It's very thoughtfully designed, and it does a lot to add to the memorability of levels. In 6-1, when you've been granted this constant just buzz of ambient noise for your music, and then when you drop down to the open section with the more intense action set pieces, the track really kicks in. Which is a moment I won't directly spoil in this video, but anyone who's experienced it knows what I'm talking about. Without these calm sections of Ultra Kill, I believe the rest of the elements would start to lose some of their impact, as they end up doing so much in allowing the game to have these ranges of feelings and emotions. And they just lead to cool moments like I described earlier. This is the end of the video now. I've discussed the four feelings of Ultra Kill. You will now buy the game on Steam because you are just so interested in it after watching the video. I'm gonna go play Gloomwood because it's probably out by the time I upload this. Thanks. Like, comment, subscribe.